again and again and again. Of course you are. Why? Because here it just keeps getting better and better and better. How was everyone's weekend? Did you get out and share? What is it that you're doing? Did you add new team members to your business? I know I did. I took some of that advice that Denise Moore gave me on Friday. And you, excuse me. And get what family. I signed up a new business partner. Yes, I did. So it worked. You guys are going to be down into this call. So you get a new information that's really, really working. Well, you have down into the Team Up the Lifestyle call. This is your host, Pastor Denise McDowell, with my business partner, Two Star, Pastor Del Wafer. Family, the line is open. Introduce yourself. Who's with me this morning? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Robert. How are you, sir? Fantastic. Fantastic. Ready to go. Good to hear you. Good to hear you this morning. Sound like you're ready to go.
my good, for this is the foundation on which I will build my career, and never will I forget that many have attained great wealth and success with only one cell talk delivered with excellence. Also, will I seek constantly to improve my manners and grace, for they are the sugar to which all are attracted. Oh, I like that. I like that. And I thought about some wonderful things that Denise Moore gave us on Friday. <laughs> I'm telling you, Sam, if you're writing down the tips that you're receiving on this call, whether it's from um, Nakisha Bond, whether it's from Shakina Day, whether it's from Pastor Dale, or whether it's from Denise Moore, <laughs> excuse me, if you are taking notes and writing these down and taking action, they really do work. I got my phone and I called an old buddy that I hadn't talked to in, oh, my gosh, <laughs> at least 10 years. And guess what? He is now my business partner. Just that quick, one simple phone call, he signed up over the phone. He had been following me on Facebook, and I noticed he's been liking some of my posts. So that was just like I knew he knew a little bit about what was going on, even though I had not verbally spoken with him. And now he's my business partner. So, family, get your pen, get your pad, write down what you're hearing on these calls, take action, build your business, because it's happening. People are looking for what we have. I'm telling you. And it's like Denise say, don't say too much when you get on the phone. Just invite them. I just happened to say enough to him because he'd been following me on Facebook. So he was already familiar with what was going on. He was looking for something to better his health, and he wanted to help others do the same. So get your pens and pad. If I know Coach Nakisha Vaughn is going to give us some other great things to answer that toolbox. So let's welcome her to the call. Coach Nakisha Vaughn, are you there? Woohoo! Pastor Denise, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Okay. Well, welcome and good morning, girl. How are you today? I am doing really, really good. We had a great TTP this weekend. We got some new business partners. So, you know, just now is the time for 10. We all got to get on board. So let's do it. And I'm super Ooh. excited about the training we have today. Oh, my goodness. Well, let's hear it. I'm excited, girl. I'm like When you say you're excited, it's going to be some good stuff. So let's hear it. Well, I always, you know, I always like to take some of the things that I'm working on in my own personal life and then try and, you know, train those things. Because once you learn it, the first thing you want to do is go out there and share it with other people because it just helps to solidify the information. And so, you know, um, as we're getting busier and busier and busier, guys, I've really been looking at ways on how do we organize ourselves? How do we maximize? Because here's the thing. You only get a certain amount of minutes every single day. We all get the same. Me and Pastor Denise have the same amount of minutes. It's just how we use those minutes. And have you ever been had a plan for your day, like, I want to accomplish these things, and then after all the activity is done and the hustle and bustle, you didn't really accomplish what you felt like you wanted to accomplish? You know, the goal in life is not to manage time, but to create a life that's absolutely fulfilling and a life that's always growing and always contributing. But here's the problem. You know, with technology, is really, really great, but it's also brought a lot of distractions into our world. And so we may have really good intentions of getting a lot of things done, but then this person wants this person's thing. That person beeps in and wants this. You get an email from this person. You get a text from this person. Someone calls you on the phone. We are constantly being dragged away and pulled away from our goals. And so you might be really, really busy, and you might be working on things that are really, really important to you or to somebody else and really, really urgent to you or to somebody else, but you might not be working on things that are most important to your life and your life plan. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to be talking about a strategy that we can all use now to make sure that everything that we're working on is in line with our goals for our lives, okay? So that's what we're going to be talking about. I probably want to do another training, Pastor Denise, to talk about, um, you know, where we're spending our time because I think it's really important. I'll just touch on it now. There's usually four okay. categories of where you're spending your time. Thank you, Pastor Denise. You're always so flexible with me. Just let me go wherever the wind blows me. So there's four areas where you're probably spending your time. You're either working on things that are urgent but maybe not important, or maybe you're working on things that are really, really important and really, really urgent. Or maybe you're working on things that are not important and not urgent, or, and this is the most important thing, maybe you're working on things that are super important but not urgent. So before we get into the training, I want to touch on each of those points. So here's the thing. If you work in a job, and let's say your job is super, super stressful, and then you come home and you're like, you know what, I just want to relax. I just want to relax, put my feet up, watch a little TV, just let my mind relax. That's working on a quadrant that is unimportant 
and not urgent. There's nothing about sitting down and watching TV that is benefiting you in your life. You're watching other people earn their money and live their dreams, but you're not doing anything for yourself. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Anything in moderation is okay. It's when you spend too much time in that quadrant and it takes you away from your other goals. Another area are things that are urgent and important. Now, this is what we spend a lot of our time on, you know, constant demands, emails, you know, especially if you're in a work environment and you're getting emails from people, but you have your own job that you're supposed to do and everything is important. You know, here's the thing I say about that. If you ever come into my office and you say, I have these five things I need to get done, I say, okay, well, you know, I know my time. I can probably get about two of those. What's most important? Well, they're all important. I say, well, then nothing's important. I'll just work on it when I get around to it. Because <laughs> not everything can be an emergency. But sometimes we make things an emergency. Or here's another quadrant. Things that are urgent but not important. Somebody sends you an email and they desperately need you to finish this report. Well, it's urgent, you know, mainly for them. But it's not really important to you. It's not what you have planned on for the day. But a lot of times we get sucked into those things. And then the other quadrant are things that are important but not urgent. And this is where we need to spend the majority of our time. This is when you're doing your goal setting. These are the things that you need to do for your life, that you need to plan for your life, but nobody's waiting on you to do it, you know? And so then it's not doesn't have that urgency. And sometimes we get addicted to that adrenaline, that urgency, that last minute, that procrastination. And we gotta step back because if we spend more time in this quadrant working on the important things, even though they're not urgent, you'll start to see some of the urgent things go away. So maybe we'll do a more in depth training. But today I want to walk out walk through a strategy of what we're going to talk about of how you can just organize your day to make sure that everything that you're working on is exactly what you want to do. You know, but before you can answer the question, what are you going to do today, first you have to ask the question is what do you want to do? And that really shifts your focus completely on how you respond to your life. It changes you from focusing on what everybody else demands for your attention or what you're afraid of or might, what might give you pleasure in the moment to really focusing on what's important for you. So there's three strategies that I want you to do. The first thing, somebody says, this has to be done. You want to say, what's the outcome? What do you really want? Have you, what are the results focused on? Because whenever you focus on something, that you will reach. Have you ever noticed that, you know, you have a lot of things going on in life, but this one thing becomes the most important thing in your life, you put all your focus and attention on, and boom, it's a resolve. Wow, imagine if you could do that to every single area of your life. And we have different areas of our lives that we have to focus on. We have our spiritual life. We have our home life. We have our businesses. Everybody on here has a business. Maybe you have a business and a full-time job. You are wearing lots of different hats. So we all have lots of, um, you know, different categories in our lives. But what is it that you really, really want? What is the outcome that you want to have accomplished in your life? Do you want to hit a certain rank? Do you want to make a certain amount of money? Do you want to quit your job in a certain amount of time? And then the next question you want to ask yourself is your purpose. What's my purpose? Knowing your purpose is going to move you emotionally. And whenever, whichever emotions we use are going to determine what we do. So if apathy is your emotion, then you're going to ignore things. Whatever your emotion is inspiring you is what you're determined you're going to do. So it's important that when we have this new thing that comes up, we say, what is the outcome? What do I want to accomplish? And why do I want to do this? You know, if you say that one of my outcomes is I want to lose weight, well, why do you want to lose weight? Well, I want to lose 15 pounds. But why do you want to lose 15 pounds? And use words that trigger you. Do you want to be more desirable? Do you want to be sexy? Do you want to be, you know, a head turner or you know, mine is I want to be a hot young trophy wife because my husband's a few years older than me. You know, whatever it is, when you start to put some emotional words into that, you have a real purpose, a real why. It's really easy to now come up with the activities that go along with that, the action plan. So what do you need to do? You can now answer that once you've decided what's my outcome for today. Now you've answered why you want that outcome, why it's important to you, what's the triggering words that are going to make you move you into action, and now it's time to make your plan for today. You may find that once you really decide, decide what your outcome is and why your purpose is, you may decide that all the things in your to-do list actually don't really line up with your goal. And maybe those are some things that you can leverage or outsource. You know, if you're looking at your list and a lot of them are a lot of home chores, you know, i got to clean this, i got to cook that, i got to do this, it might make more, it might be, for your lifestyle, it might be easier if you hire someone to do something like that. We might be saying, oh, you know, I can't afford to hire somebody. But imagine if you could take the three or four hours that it was going to take you to do all that housework, hire somebody to do it, how much more productive would you be if you were able to work on your business, if you were able to grow your business, if you were able to go out there and, and generate some more sales? So it's really all about a balance. And we always think that we have to do everything. 
But we don't always have to do everything. A lot of times we can chunk those things in. A lot of times we can outsource a lot of those activities. You know, or sometimes we might decide, you know what, it's not important to my life plan. I'm just not going to do it because it's not important to me. It's not important to my goals. And maybe that's something that I can give to somebody else to do. Or maybe if I talk to the person who gave me that requirement and gave them some resources, maybe they will be able to help, to help themselves and I wouldn't have to spend my time working on it. So that's really, really important, guys. It's a really quick training today. But I, I have another tip that I want to give you guys. So this one is just really, always really bothers me. But I, we're going into that. So remember, we're going to look at what's the outcome. What do I really want? What is my purpose? Why? Why is this important to me? Why do I want to do this? When you start to say, why do I want to do this versus why do I have to do that, you're going to see your whole mental attitude just completely shift. Because when you want to do something, the time goes by so fast. When you want to get out there and talk to people, you can be at a meeting and you thought it was only going to take you an hour and you're there for two and a half hours and it didn't matter because you were having fun. It was in line with the goals that you wanted. You were achieving things. And when you have that type of excitement, what that does is that builds belief. What happens when you build that belief? That means that you're going to take more action. What happens when you take more action? You're going to start to see better results. What happens when you see better results? You're going to start to build that belief. Now you're going in the upward cycle. Do you see how that works versus being trapped in the in, – and what happens to a lot of us is that we're always working on lots and lots of things but accomplishing nothing. And then we end the rest of the day like, oh, man, how come I didn't do this? And how come I didn't do that? And, man, I, you know, now it's time to go to bed and I was supposed to do this and all these things and people are waiting on me. My team was looking for this and that and the other. And I didn't get anything accomplished. And that just kind of lowers things. And then the next day maybe you go and you spend a little bit more time in that escape column where you're working on things that are unimportant and not urgent because you were just so stressed out from yesterday. And then what does that do? That creates this bad cycle of where you have low belief, you do low action, you see low results. Lowers your belief, you take less action, you see less results. So what we want to do is we want to stop. And we want to start going on that upward cycle. If you're feeling like you were going on that downward cycle because you were just so overwhelmed with everything that everybody wants for you, I want you to stop. Write down a list of all the things that you need to do. Start to chunk those into categories, personal, professional, spiritual, emotional, physical. Whatever it is that your categories are, you probably have ten, you know, five or ten different categories depending on how complicated your life is. Stop, look at those categories, and now start going through each one of those. What's my outcome? Why do I want to do this? Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to outsource it, and that's okay too. You know, or maybe you're going to say, you know what, I'm going to spend this much time. You know, I do have a stressful day. So maybe what I'm going to do when I come home is I'm going to spend an hour decompressing. Because if I spend that one hour decompressing, doing some yoga, listening to some relaxing music, getting into a prayer state, then I'll be able to go for the rest of the, week, the rest of the day, and then I won't feel as stressed out at the end of the day and feel like I have to take even more time than I really do. So it's, okay. it's not that you can't go into that escape column and take some relaxation time. It's just make sure that you manage it and make sure that whatever time you do take, that it's in line with your goal of what is it that you want to accomplish. I know I keep saying this over and over again, but hopefully you guys are getting it. What is it that you want to accomplish it? Why do you want to accomplish it? And now what do I need to do? And when you're writing out what you want to do, you also want to freeform. You know, let's say that your category is you wanted to lose weight. Maybe you want to, you know, research different exercise plans. Uh, you know that we have our Slim by 10, so maybe you need to stock up on some more Slim by 10. Maybe you need to get your Trim by 10 order or do your upgrade that you've been planning on doing. Whatever it is, you want to make a plan of all the different things. You want to get a workout buddy. You want to join the gym. You want to get a trainer. List out all those things, and then you can go back later and prioritize about which one is in line with the outcome that you're looking for, which one is in line with the purpose and the why, which is the one that you want to work on. And now you'll start to see yourself getting into that cycle where that you're actually getting results. You're really managing your time so that now you're getting results. You're not just busy. You're not just doing a lot of activity. You're not just having a lot of motion, but you're actually achieving results. Because once you achieve those results, you're going to start doing more and more action, and you're going to get more and more results-oriented. So I hope that's to bless somebody. But here's another one. Here's one of the biggest time savers that I had. Okay. So I'm not judging you, okay? I love you. Nikisha Bond loves you. I would never judge you. But how many emails do you have in your inbox? I would say I was over at my dad's house um, the other day, and I was like, oh, my gosh, Dad, you have over 2,000 emails. He's like, that's really good. I used to have 5,000, so I'm actually doing really, really good. I'm like, I cannot function in a world where I had 2,000 emails in my inbox. If you have 2,000 or 10,000 or however many you have, I'm totally not judging you. But here's a tip that's really going to help you. It's going to take a lot of time up front, but later on you're actually going to be really, really happy. Okay, so 
you know, many years ago I heard this tip that you don't leave anything in your inbox that you don't need to actively be working on, which means that anytime you get an email, you're either going to throw it away, you're going to file it, or you're going to leave it in your inbox until you do something with it. So I get an email from somebody, they want me to create something for them. Maybe I can't get to it right now, I'm going to leave it in my inbox as a reminder. When my inbox gets too long, that's when I know my to-do list is starting to get a little bit out of control. I'm getting too many commands, too many demands from other people, and I have to go through and I have to purge and see which one I'm going to work on, which one I'm going to outsource, or you know which ones I need to get a little bit more help or a little bit more information on. And if you start to do that little simple strategy, it'll make it easier for you to, A, find emails that people said they sent you that you said you couldn't find because you have over 5,000 emails in your inbox. Again, I'm not judging you. You know, but it's going to make it a lot easier for you to find the emails that you're looking for, to respond to people that you actually need to respond for. You know, in my personal email, it helps a lot. It helps for me. It helps to keep all the junk out so that I really only have the emails that I need to look at in my inbox. But for my professional, it really, really, really helps because I wouldn't know what I'm supposed to be working on. Not with that I wouldn't know what I'm supposed to be working on. I wouldn't know if there were things that, I was, that people were asking for me that I hadn't worked on yet because they were lost in my 2,000 emails. And so that one was a really, really, really big time saver for me. So, you know, it's really hard at first because if you have 2,000 emails, honestly, you probably could select all and delete. They're probably not important to you if you haven't gone back through and had to search or look for anything. You know, I know another person, she went on maternity leave. She had over 1,000 emails in her inbox, and she deleted everything and sent everybody an email and said, hey, I've deleted all emails in the past six months. If you need something from me, please send me another email. And then she was like, I probably got like five or six emails from people, but it could have been five or six emails versus going through a 1,000 different emails to only realize that there was maybe only five or six points. A lot of times, too, when things sit in your email for a while, people will find another way to get their problem solved if you're not being very responsive to them. Because like I said, if you come to me and everything's an emergency and nothing's an emergency, I'll work on it when I get to it. So, you know, this is never a problem of discipline. It's more about having important, important goals and goals that don't have any power to move you in any shape or form. You might have a goal on your list that says talk to more people. Does that inspire you? Does that really want to make you motivated to get out there and to actually talk to more people? It doesn't for me. Maybe it does for you. It doesn't for me. But if I say, you know what, go out there and share change, you know, five people's lives with these transformative sprays. Share the story with five different people. Share your story with five different people. Tell five different people how they can, you know, have a better life or have residual income or not have to live paycheck to paycheck. That kind of inspires me. That gets me up in the morning that I might actually get the chance to go out there and change somebody's lives. Because when you go to these TTTs and you're meeting with people one-on-one, -on -one, people are desperately searching for something. But here's the thing. There's all these different – there's so many choices. There's so many choices to change your life. There are so many choices of companies that you can join, of weight loss programs that you can have. There's so many different choices. Now it's about narrowing in on the one that's most important to you, the one that's going to help you to achieve your outcome, the one that's in line with your purpose. And so when you start to have those goals aligned with your purpose and giving you the outcome that you want, it's really easy to do the activity. So I hope this has blessed somebody today. I hope this has changed the way that you think about your to-do list. You know, don't just take all these different actions. Really organize them in a way so that you actually get your outcome at the, day, at the end of the day because now you're designing a life that's going to be fulfilling to you and exciting to live. Back to you, Pastor Denise. I know I'm a little early today. Great advice, Coach Nakisha Bond. Guys, I hope you heard that. Now, Nakisha, <clears throat> you talked about the importance of the category, four different categories that we find ourselves in, one of those categories each day. But the one that we want to be in is the important but not urgent. But in the case, isn't it true? If you don't spend time and the important but not urgent, then that important but not urgent will become urgent. And then you end up, you know, being frustrated because you neglected what was once not urgent but is now urgent. Isn't that true? Absolutely, Pastor Nene. So good that you brought that up. I mean, I think a great analogy would be our health. You know, our health we sometimes take for granted. Yes. And when it gets to a point where you're in a very <laughs> urgent situation, you know, this yeah. something that was very important that we should have been working on all of our lives, that we should have been eating right, spraying our sprays, you know, taking in physical activity, all of a sudden it becomes very urgent. You're in a serious situation. You're going to react differently than if you had taken the time ahead of time to really plan and to really, you know, take care of your body. You know, I, was, I had re-listened to Pastor Dale's testimony 
um, maybe like a week ago, Pastor Denise. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I loved what he was talking about was that the doctor said that the sprays were really integral into helping him so that whatever what he was suffering from was not as bad as it could have been, which it could have taken his life. And that's because he was working on the important things back when they weren't urgent. So when it came to an urgent matter, he was able to deal with it a lot easier than if he hadn't done any of that important work ahead of time. So that's a great distinction. Those things that are important, even though they're not urgent today, will eventually become urgent if you don't work on them. So it's so important that we spend a lot of time in that category. And maybe you can't spend as much time as you want, but I think they were saying you should spend at least 50% of your time in that category. And where can you draw from if you're saying, um, oh, I don't have any time, I don't have any time, I don't have any time. You can probably draw from your leisure category. If you were really, really honest and you really looked at what you did this past weekend or just this past week and, and really categories and said, how much time did I spend working on important things that weren't urgent? And then how many times did you spend time working on things that weren't important and weren't urgent? And I bet you you can take some time from there. You can also take some time from working on urgent things that aren't important. Wait, yeah, urgent. So unimportant, uh, not urgent, and urgent, but not important. Those two categories, we have a lot of extra time. And that urgent but not important are usually other people's requirements from you, and the unimportant and not urgent are usually the things that we do to, quote, unquote, relax. You know, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not judging you on where you want to spend your time. Maybe you have a really stressful job and you need two hours of just decompression time. If that's going to make you fulfilled, then that's what you absolutely need to do. And so it's not about saying, oh, well, don't spend any time relaxing or don't spend any time unless it's, you know, super important. That's the only time I can spend. No, because life is all about balance. You know, if you need a little bit of time there, go ahead and take it. But just make sure that you're spending, like, around 50% of your time, if you can, if you can, working on those things that are super important to you because that's how we're going to get our goals, you guys. That's how we're going to reach our goals. That's how we're going to get to our dreams and live the life that we were all designed to live. Back to you, Pastor Denise. And I think that percentage of urgent, uh, important that urgent, should, it should be 95% of your time right there because we're spending <laughs> about 95% of the time on things that are really not, uh, really, they're important, but they're not urgent. It's like you said, it's those things that people have impressed upon you to do, or maybe you're trying to impress people to get those things done. But we also learned Friday that your time is going to dictate your success. So where you spend your time, whether it's important, not urgent, or really important, not urgent, is going to determine your success. Coach Nikisha Vaughn, thank you for that, and we're looking forward to part two of that next week, because that time is important. Time is the one thing we can't get back, right? Yes, absolutely. We can't get that back. You can't buy it either. <laughs> can't buy it. And time is precious. Every moment counts. Every moment counts. And as you know, we teach a lot about being in the now, that, that present time, that, that zero to five seconds of conscious awareness is where you make your conscious decisions. And how you spend your time in that, that zero to five, five seconds of conscious decision making determines your future. So time is important. I think that's an excellent topic uh, to talk about, Nikisha. Thank you for that. Got my notes, y'all. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's go out to the U.K. The Dr. Anita Poole was our quote for today. Dr. Poole, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? Okay, today. Yes, I can. How are you today? I am good. Thank you. It's been a beautiful day here in the U.K. And, yeah, you know, uh, we're coming to towards summer, and people are going to be really thinking about, you know, what do they look like on the beach for their holidays. And, of course, we've got the Slim by 10. We've got the Trim by 10. We've got the fantastic vitamins in D-Power, B-Boost. We've got the fantastic antioxidants in the Super 10 and the Cell Energy. We've got great, great products, and the products can not only uh, change people's lives in terms of their health, but their wealth too, especially if they follow the guidelines that Akisha trains us on on Mondays. So absolutely fantastic. And, you know, if you think, um, you know, things can't be done, my goodness, I, I read a story at the weekend about this lady who lost her leg actually in a speedboat accident. And do you know she is now skiing, she's running, she's walking, She's had children, she runs a business, and it's 
all because she organized herself really well, which is exactly what Nikisha was saying. She set her goals, she set her priorities, and she set her plan how she was going to do it. She looked after her health, and she persevered and practiced every day. And in a way, we could apply that to Team Effort Network and my video talk, you know, all part of the same parent company, Team Effort International. And if all of us do exactly that, we're going to really, really go places. You know, every single day there's something on the news, in the media, in the headlines about health. It's so incredibly important and about the financial situation. So, you know, we've got a solution for people who open their eyes and they just see it. We've just got to get it in front of them. Recently, there's been some headlines about the, the medics are very, very, very concerned. They're saying that a diet of sugar, excess carbohydrate, excess calories is a greater cause of obesity than a lack of exercise. And in fact, some of the headlines are very confusing for people. Uh, because they then read something like that, and the way it's worded is so incredibly important, and people are so confused about the way media reports on something. The medics were not saying that exercise is not important. They were saying that exercise is important, but they're finding increasingly that nutrition is increasingly important. And people are getting sidelined on exercise, but they're not really educating themselves properly about nutrition, and they're still having far too much sugar, carbohydrates, and calories. And in fact, the medics were saying that the excess sugar, carbohydrate, and calories, in fact, the calories from sugar and carbohydrate is even more important than the uh, calories from fats. There's been a lot of education about fats, but people are still not understanding that sugar and carbohydrate is 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 really uh, bad for the health. Basically, you know, the increase of diabetes increases 11 times for every 150 uh, grams. Uh, uh, sorry, 150 additional sugar calories compared to fat calories. You know, that's how bad for us <laughs> sugar is, basically. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, why am I mentioning it? Because slim by 10, trim by 10 actually helps to, um, you know, actually burn up the calories and uh, burn up the calories from sugar, basically. So, you know, we've got something absolutely fantastic. And in fact, our products have something in it that can actually help the good fats rather than um, the bad fats, basically. So very, very important, our products. And, of course, our income opportunity, absolutely incredible. So, Jim Rohn said, if you don't design your own life plan, chances are you'll fall into someone else's plan. And guess what they have planned for you? Not much. So, it's exactly what Nikisha was saying. Set your own life plan. Set your own goals. Set your own outcomes. Think about what you want your outcome to be. And then... Do the activities designed on that outcome. Dennis Waitley said, learn from the past, set vivid, detailed goals for the future, and live in the only moment of time over which you have any control. And that is now. Just like Denise was saying, live in the now, but set your goals for the future, but make them really, really vivid. So visualize them, you know, picture yourself actually achieving those goals. Picture yourself what, not only what it looks like, but what it feels like, tastes like, smells like almost. Imagine you're there and set your heart on that and then go for it. Albert Camus said, to know oneself, you should assert yourself. So, you know, go that extra mile and make it happen. Just recently at the weekend, we've had the UK Marathon, and Walter Elliott said, perseverance is not a long race. It is many short races, one after the other. And every one of those athletes in the UK Marathon, they 
wouldn't have trained by just going out there and running the race, they would have divided that race up into segments. And every day they would have practiced a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And they would have persevered and persevered. No matter what they felt like, they would have set their routine and done it day after day. And that's how they would have achieved their UK marathon. So William Clement Stone said, definiteness of purpose is the starting point of all achievement. So think about your purpose. Start it now. Start it today. And make it happen, folks. Back to you, Denise and Nikisha. That's right, Dr. Cole. Make it happen, family. Make it happen. Coach Nikisha, I want to say congratulations also on your new business partners from over the weekend and also everyone else who have added to your business partners. I know Vicki Soto is constantly adding um, new business partners, Denise Moore and, and uh, Donald uh, Joseph and, and everyone that's, that's around the globe that's really sharing and adding new business partners. Congratulations for a job well done. And I also want to, uh, you know, mention what Nikisha said about, um, uh, about the time where you spend your time. If you're spending it in the urgent category, you have to understand that's for you're stressed out. If you're constantly waiting until the last minute to get things done, you are going to be in the urgent category, which is going to cause stress. We know what stress does, right? Stress is the breeding ground for sickness, so we don't want to be there. So make your, write your plan, make it plain and simple, run with it, because these tips do work. The training tools that you're getting on this call, they really do work. The only thing you have to do is apply. Remember, Team Up and Network is offering something unique. Something different. It's a me only here in Team Up and Network. It's a, it's a solution to health concerns, to your financial struggles. Everybody wants help in their finances. You can't tell me you don't. And we've been predicted to go 50 million in 18 months. Write that down, family. Put get a get a strip of paper, a post, or something. Write 50 million in 18 months because that's where we're going. You need to see where you're going in 18 months. That is where you're going. And as you begin to see that, you will begin to see what you are going to need to do as far as your time, as far as your strategy, as far as your planning, as far as your calling, as far as you reaching out. You're, it's going to come to you what you need to be, to do to be a part of the 50 million that will happen in 18 months. It will happen. But you need to write it out, post it on your mirrors, on your dashboard, on your car, and your phone, on your computer. Put it somewhere before you so that you can constantly see where you're going. Remember, we have the, uh, the solution to a lot of people's concerns. Smith and Network is offering a lifestyle of fun, of family, and of financial freedom. Everyone wants to be a part of that. Show me one person who don't, and I'll show you ten who do. Family, thank you for being with us today. Coach Nakisha Bond, a blessing as oh, always. Nice. Got, yes, uh-huh. Sorry, before you log yes. off, can you just make an announcement for um, the calls that we have coming up the week, the Spanish calls? And I know um, Don Joseph has a call on Wednesday and Sunday, if you just wouldn't mind throwing that out there for everybody. Yeah, go right ahead, girl. You're doing good. Let us know what's happening. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So we have uh, daily calls at the same number from 8 a.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern, every single day, Monday through Friday. There's also Show Me the Money Call on Tuesday and Thursday. That's 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Um, Eastern Time. And then we have Don Joseph has a call on Wednesdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. So it's a little late, so it's about 11 o'clock um, Eastern Time. But I just wanted to throw that out there because, oh, and then when are the Spanish calls? They're after this call, right, at 9 a.m.? That's correct. Every day, Perfect. Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, Spanish calls on the same number at 9 p.m. So make sure, you know, um, reaching out to those communities and making sure that you're sending them uh, over there, you know, uh, that's a great opportunity for us to just expand the base because, you know, we're going to be going into Mexico soon, so everybody go out there. Oh, and I know that um, – uh, What's his name? Mr. T. He is um, yeah. getting a team together, and he's launching Canada. He has a new website that you can go to. It's called uh, www.winwithcanada.com. Uh, you can send your prospects over there so that they can sign up. There's a pre-registration form and some other activities that are on there because we're getting ready for Canada. Back to you. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about the Canada right quick, Nikisha. Uh, let's give that again because I know we mentioned it briefly, uh, I think, on Friday. But let's give some more information about the, what's happening in Canada. 
Right, so we're getting ready to launch in Canada. They're looking for 200 leaders who want to launch that area. And so if you go to www.winwithcanada.com, um, there will be a website that you can have some of your prospects go and pre-register for. Uh, they're going to start having events in May, and the event schedule is on there as well. And then if they just needed to contact Mr. T or anyone on the team, they can just put in their contact information there, and he'll make sure that he gets back to them. And so um, it's going to be a very, very exciting time. This is like the pre-pre-launch. So this is a great opportunity for anyone in that area or anyone who knows anyone in that area to absolutely position themselves to take over the market. Because even though we always like to say whenever you join, you can make money, and that's absolutely a true statement, but when you get to be in first, you get to just make more money, and you get to make it faster. So you might as well be a part of the pre-launch. I agree. Have your people in position. Have somebody because they're going to launch. And if you have your, your two hundred, if uh, some of those 200 people are your guests, that we launch and they sign up, guess what? You're going to be some of one of the first ones that will be a part of the growth of Canada. So this is what Mel Gill is saying when he says, grow locally, but think globally. We're going around the world. Thank you, Coach Nikisha Bond. Uh, don't forget, family, keep before you uh, the goals that we're setting here at Team Up Network so that you're constantly a part of it, so you're going with us. Not on the sideline watching. This is not the time to sit down and watch and see what's going to happen. The wait and see game. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. You better get up and get in this race. You better get in this race because it's not given to the fifth of the strong, but to the one that enjoys on the end. So let's get busy, family. Let's get busy making it happen because it's happening as it's happening fast. This wave of growth is taking off, and I sure hope you're in it with a full team. Now, as we say, Get off this call and get out there and tell somebody all the great things you've heard on this call today and be back with us again tomorrow morning to hear more great things of what's happening here and Team Efforts Network. Ooh, don't forget to like the Facebook page so you can get all the updates and the videos that's going forth. Be a part of what's happening. Don't do the second wait. Uh uh. Sound Clark, he's saying it again. So you're sitting and watching, you're waiting. Uh uh. This is the time to take action. Big time action. Faith without works is dead. Don't be dead, family. Take action. Make it happen. Be back tomorrow. I love you guys. You are loved and you are greatly appreciated. God bless you on having a prosperous day on purpose. Mm-hmm.